Hello and welcome to Vodcast 3.1. In Chapter 3, we will focus on landscapes fashioned by water. And this first Vodcast focuses on weathering, erosion, and mass wasting. It's important that we understand the difference between an external process and an internal process. Internal processes derive their energy from Earth's interior. And some internal processes include things like mountain building and volcanic activity. The three processes we're going to focus on in this vodcast, namely weathering, mass wasting, and erosion, are all external processes. They occur at or near Earth's surface, and they're primarily driven by energy that comes from the sun. Let's start off by considering weathering, because it's typically going to be the first step in the movement of material and the reshaping of Earth's surface. As we learned in the chemical weathering and mechanical weathering vodcast, there are two primary forms of weathering. There is the disintegration of rock through physical processes, as examples frost wedging or biological activity, and there's also the decomposition of rock through chemical alteration. The examples we focus on were oxidation and the effects that carbonic acid can have on rocks and minerals. Let's now transition to talking about mass wasting. Mass wasting is defined as the downslope movement of rock and soil due to the influence of gravity. Gravity is pulling down on everything, including you and I. And if rock and soil undergo weathering, they are more susceptible to mass wasting. The key thing to remember here is that it's the influence of gravity that ultimately triggers mass wasting events. Let's focus on the four examples shown here in these images. The first example of mass wasting we'll consider is slump. And slump is the downward sliding of rocks or other unconsolidated materials as they move along a curved surface. Take a look at the surface of rupture. It's shaped similar to a contact lens. So the key thing to remember about slump is that that curved surface of rupture is what forms things like scarp and slump block. Another example of mass wasting is rock slides. A rock slide occurs when blocks of bedrock break loose and slide very rapidly in the downhill direction. These rocks can vary in size, but what's terrifying is they can be very large. Gravity will pull the rocks in the downhill direction and they'll typically pile up and accumulate at the lowest point under the hill or the cliff or wherever they were originally located. The third example shown is a debris flow, and a debris flow is a flow of weathered debris that contains a large amount of water. We sometimes call debris flows mud flows, and mud flows can be extremely devastating to communities living in low points of, say, a valley. The last example of mass wasting we'll consider is an earth flow, and an earth flow is a tongue-like flow of water-saturated clay-rich soil that occurs on a hillside. That tongue-like structure shown here in the image will break away and move in the downhill direction which would be to the right in this image. So a good way to remember it is that when we're talking about mass wasting and you see the word flow, it's ultimately water that's causing these particular mass wasting events. The last thing we'll consider on this slide is erosion. Erosion is the physical removal of material by a mobile agent. And some examples of mobile agents include flowing water, ocean waves, lake waves, wind, and glacial ice. When we consider erosion, we're talking about the movement of, say, sediment or other materials from one location to another location. Here are two pictures that show really good examples of erosion in action. The picture you see on the left was taken in a rural farmland area in Wisconsin, and heavy rains triggered the movement of soil from one location to another. The picture on the right shows the extremely powerful erosion action of ocean waves. Over time, those waves beat on that shoreline and when they do so, they'll pull away sediment and other materials as the waves retreat back towards the water. This roadway is obviously no longer safe to drive on, and that's entirely because of the erosional power of ocean waves. Let's talk about the relationship between mass wasting and landform development. The starting point for our discussion of landform evolution is weathering, which can be simply thought of as the breaking apart of rock. As an example, frost wedging is perhaps the most important mechanical weathering process. And if liquid water can get into a rock fracture, it can widen the rock fracture if the water were to freeze, because water expands as it freezes. And as a result, it would exert an outward pressure on the walls of the fracture. So let's suppose the frost wedging breaks a rock into smaller pieces. The next stage of landform evolution is mass wasting, and that's going to be the transfer of materials downslope due to the influence of gravity. Let's say that those broken pieces of rock that formed during frost wedging now rapidly fall down a cliffside as a rock slide occurs. The rock slide is an example of a mass wasting event where material moves from a higher location to a lower location under the influence of gravity. The last consideration for landform evolution is erosion. And erosion is essentially the transportation of material from one place to another place. 
Flowing water is the most common means of erosion. And if you take a look at the rock slide, imagine there's a really, really heavy rainfall. That rain can pick up rock fragments and sediment. And as that rain flows downhill into say a river or a stream or a lake or what have you, that sediment will obviously be carried to a different location. Over long periods of time, most sediment will eventually make its way out to the sea. As we'll learn in a future vodcast, the mouth of most major rivers is often located at the land-sea interface. Mass wasting can also shape stream valleys over time. Let's consider three images that show the evolution of a stream valley. The first picture you see is what's known as a V-shaped valley, and it is an extremely narrow valley. Now over time, mechanical and chemical weathering can occur to break the rocks on each side of the valley wall into smaller bits. And then as mass wasting occurs, regardless of its form, those weathered materials will fall downhill under the influence of gravity, and this process will ultimately start to widen out the stream valley shown. The last stage of development after weathering and mass wasting and erosion have occurred in this stream valley over a very long period of time is an extremely wide U-shaped stream valley. These really broad valleys often have meandering rivers, which are rivers that curve a lot. And the take home point here is that over time, the three external processes we've considered in this vodcast, namely weathering, mass wasting, and erosion, work synergistically to reshape Earth's surface. Okay, that concludes the first vodcast for Chapter 3. I hope this video helped you develop a good understanding of weathering, mass wasting, and erosion. And in our next video podcast, we're going to take a look at the water cycle, which will help us understand how water does what it does when shaping Earth's surface.